Welcome to today's five good minutes, considering the season of Advent with Kay Warheit. I grew up in a church that was very fundamental. We were presented with the knowledge of Jesus' salvation and the way of the good news of the gospel, which is that we can be born again through the saving grace of Jesus' death and resurrection. I learned early on that our lives become magnified when we experience this one time on earth, walking in his path or walking with the God of the universe. In the church in my childhood, there was little or no art displayed, except for a stained glass cross at the front of the sanctuary and a copy of a painting of a light brown haired, blue eyed Jesus in our Sunday school rooms. As a teenager, I distinctly remember the first time I walked into a friend's church where there were stained glass windows depicting Bible scenes all around the church's sanctuary, a very ornate wooden altar and cross, candles burning in bright red candle holders, a foreign to me fragrant incense. I didn't know what to think, but I was aware that every one of my senses was affected, including the reverent silence of the church. Over the years since then, I've been fascinated with man's attempt using various forms of art, whether in music, writings, poetry, traditional foods, or artwork of various mediums that seem to satisfy our desire to worship and come closer to God or to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. What drives us to want to experience him, to experience with our senses or to see God? It's in our DNA. Genesis 127, we read, we were created in the image of God and we have an inborn desire to know and to worship this omniscient, creative God whose desire it is for us to know and love him in return. In Leviticus 23, we read of God's instructions for remembering and celebrating God's faithfulness in provisions and guidance for the Jewish nation. Celebrations, feasts, and festivals with specific foods, recitations of his law, fasting, sacrifices, trumpet blasts, and worship were specified. Likewise, in the New Testament, we read that Jesus and his family and disciples observed some of these feasts or festivals, Passover, Luke 22, Pentecost, Acts 1-4. How then should we observe and celebrate when we remember what took place on that first Christmas? While we can easily get lost in foods, parties, decorations, and gifts of Christmas, we as believers in the Messiah should celebrate his arrival on earth. Through God's creative love and mercy for mankind, God has given us five senses to enjoy and praise him during this time of Advent. How do we use our five senses? Psalm 34, 8, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. From grapes and figs to sweet cookies and roasts, we can praise our God for his gifts of food and taste. Psalm 27, 6, At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will sing and make music to the Lord. O come, let us adore him. Joy to the world, or silent night. Our voices are lifted in praise to the arrival of the Messiah on earth. There's no greater joy on earth than knowing that we are loved, and we cannot help but sing when we know that in our hearts. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. By reading and rereading the story of the first Christmas recorded in Luke 2, we should allow our imaginations to take us to that stable with Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus. Hear the Christmas story again and visit that very dark hillside with the angel announcing the arrival of the Messiah to those innocent shepherds. 2 Corinthians 2, 14 to 16, But thanks be to God who always leads us in triumphal procession in Christ and through us spreads everywhere the fragrance of the knowledge of him. For we are to God the aroma of Christ, the fragrance of life. May the fragrance of cookies baking or the aroma of a meal provided to a homeless person cause us to praise God for the sweet fragrance that Jesus exudes to those who live for him alone. Luke 2, verse 7b, Mary wrapped her baby Jesus in cloths and laid him in a manger. 
No matter our age, we are touched by the giving or the getting of a wrapped gift for or from those whom we love. We participate in the sharing of God's love that was lovingly wrapped in a blanket and presented for all of mankind. Father God, for the gift of our senses, we ask that you remind us that our senses are a gift to be given back to you as we enjoy your creative love in and around us. Guide us to seek you as we continue through this season of Advent. Thanks for joining us here today. There's a lot of great content to explore on Orchard Hill Plus and on the Orchard Hill main feed from the weekend. Have a great day.